Well, good morning, good everyone, morning. and welcome to our uh, Sunday morning worship on Sunday, the 3rd of May, which means it's the first Sunday of the month. And so during this service of worship, we'll enjoy communion together. And you may want to prepare for that when we break at this session uh, for praise. But let me share a verse with you. It's from Isaiah 54, one that struck me. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. Um, what a wonderful verse uh, to be reminded of together as we come before the Lord in worship this morning. Whatever our personal circumstance and whatever our national and global situation, one thing is certain. Whilst the mountains may be shaken and even the hills on occasion removed, the unfailing love of the Lord will never be shaken or never be taken from those that are in Jesus Christ. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thought. Well, we're going to begin our time of worship with prayer. Uh, after which Sheen is going to lead us in our reading. Then we'll have a break for praise and then we'll have communion together. So as I said earlier, you may wish to prepare for that. And then after further praise, we'll come together for the, uh, the word. So uh, let's begin in prayer. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of worship. Uh, that togetherness, that despite our being remote from each other, is never that us overcome because we are one in Christ Jesus and we are before you now as a family of faith at Dedridge Baptist. We come, Lord, because your love and the pronouncement of it in the Gospels, and even here in Isaiah, as we've just read, your pronouncement of that love toward us encourages us, strengthens us, lifts us up, even in the most difficult and demanding of times. So, Lord, thank you. And thank you too for the cross. Your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, has come and died for us. He has endured all the hurt and pain and shame of that dreadful event that we might, through this new and living way that he has opened up, come before you together in worship. And so we stand this morning on the grounds of the achievements of your Son and his present intercession for us in the heavenly places. Lord, when we come to prayer, we like to remember those of our family of faith. And this morning we give thanks again for Anne Ray and continuing improvements after the fall. We thank you for preserving Kirsten and Torsten safe so they would be in Germany for his mother's funeral. Uh, we remember Sam having applied for those posts in administration at St. John's and the Royal Infirmary. And we continue to ask your blessing, Lord, upon those applications. We think, too, of Yvonne Mackenzie and the family as this coming Wednesday they gather for the funeral of a much-loved husband and father. And we remember, too, John and Betty at this time. Betty confused by how things are and the restrictions and limitations on her movements. We just pray for her and we pray for John and the family as they think about the future together. We think of the care homes, Lord, uh, that we are associated with as a fellowship. We pray for Peacock and all the members uh, that are there. We think also of Crusader Court and those that are there, and of course our Clocken. And we just bring them before you, uh, staff and those that live there, and ask your blessing upon them. We think too, Lord, on a far wider scale. We think of the hospitals that serve us here and in Edinburgh and indeed the NHS nationally. We continue as a fellowship to pray for them that you will bless, strengthen and protect them, Lord, from harm. And we pray for those, Lord, suffering with this dreadful virus. Lord, will you at this time speak your word of peace into their hearts? And will you give peace to families that feel the wrench um, of having to remain remote from those they love and are hurting. So be with us, Lord, we pray, at this very difficult time. But by the things of our faith, uh, we ask that this morning you will lift us up and that you will strengthen our hearts in grace. And we ask it all now in the name of Jesus, our wonderful Saviour. 
Amen. Amen. Now, Sheena is going to lead us in our reading. And that reading is Mark chapter 8. Um, it begins at verse 27 and finishes at verse 33. So 27 to 33, and it's entitled Peter's Confession of Christ. So Mark 8, verse 27. Sheena. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Out of my sight, Satan, he said, you do not have in mind the things of God but the things of men. Amen. Thank you, Sheila. And now we'll turn to praise together.